What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to do bitmap effects in Photoshop. Alright, so as you can see I did a little uh, something here, it's a 3D render uh, of my shotgun that I did for Creator, uh, as well as uh, some typing. So uh, the back font here is by High Typefaces, uh, you should check them out, I'll put a link in the description because they have some very uh, cool fonts for a very low price. So basically what the bitmap effect is, is an image uh, and all the black and white value or all the color values are basically converted into uh, smaller dots. And this is something that, um, well, people throughout history and certain art styles have been doing. Um, so the only uh, actual colors that are in a bitmap image are just, just plain black and plain white. Basically like the threshold filter in Photoshop. So that means if you want to add color, uh, you should do it later. Uh, because uh, converting it into a bitmap uh, will remove all the colors from your Photoshop file. So yeah, basically it just heads up for that. So what I have here, let me just ungroup this. It's a typeface and let's just merge this to a smart object. Uh, also guys, by uh, converting into a bitmap object, you will lose all your smart objects and uh, type objects. So it will just rasterize everything. Uh, so be aware of that as well. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is if we go to image mode, and if your image is set to RGB or CMYK, uh, which is probably uh, most of the times the case, uh, you should convert it to grayscale because bitmap is grayed out as you can see. So if we convert it to grayscale, uh, we can just press don't merge and don't rasterize. And this just removes all the color values. Uh, if you would be having any reds or yellows or whatever in this, uh, it would just turn to gray now. So um, now we can actually convert this into a bitmap image. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to mode, bitmap. And it asks you to flatten the layers. And this is what I said, it will rasterize everything. So you just have to click okay. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is there are some different options here and I think the one that's used the most is halftone screen. Um, and yeah, the resolution of your image, um, most of the time for digital, uh, it's 72 uh, pixels per inch. Um, I'm just going to use the same output because otherwise my image will be resized and I'll show you guys what this looks like. Uh, Alright, so with a half known screen, uh, let's just go with a frequency of 10 lines per inch and the shape will do round and if we click OK. You can actually see that it's getting, well, it looks a little bit weird. Um, so if we zoom in, you can actually see that this is all just black or white. And it tries to create gray values out of those. So my favorite parts about like using bitmap is on uh, bevel and emboss effects and text, as you can see here. It just really looks like nice and really cool. Um, yeah, but if we uh, reverse it, let's just go back. And if we go to bitmap again, I'll show you what it means if you uh, go to the health tone screen and you up the frequency here. So let's just make it 20. Uh, you'll see that there are, the dots will be a little bit smaller than before. And basically this preserves a little bit more detail, but as you can see in the 3D render, uh, it looks a little bit odd. And if I zoom in, you can like see this weird illusion happening, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's basically what you want. But um, And I'll show you what it looks like when we do a have to an effect with less uh, dots per inch or lines per inch. So if we press five, which is like uh, a quarter of what we uh, had earlier. And now you can actually really see the, uh, the circles really well. Uh, but as you can see in the text here, the detail isn't really preserved that well. Uh, and it looks a bit wonky. So uh, another version of bitmap that I really like is the pattern editor. And um, I'm just gonna put the output in the same settings as it is, like uh, right now. And if we click OK, if I zoom in, so the pattern editor is basically it makes a cube or a square, and it just fills that square in with a pattern. And as you can see, um, the more the darker the parts, the more black little squares every pattern has, and lighter. Uh, the more white squares every pattern has. Um, so I feel like you could do re some really cool stuff with this one as well. Um, yeah, I really like this on the bevel and emboss textures. Uh, so yeah, this is one of my favorites, definitely. All right, so let's just go with a 50% threshold. And as you can see, this doesn't really leave anything uh, to be seen. And that's because my uh, image is a little bit darker. Um, and basically what this does is, if you go to adjustments here and you click on threshold, 
this is the same result, but yeah, because it's a 50% threshold, you can't really modify these. So if we drag this one in, you can see more detail coming in. So yeah, if you would be wanting this effect, I wouldn't recommend going to bitmap for this. All right, so let's go with diffusion data. So basically this uses a, like a noise pattern, I think, if we zoom in. I'm not really sure how this one works. I think it's just like more uh, white little pixels in one place. So yeah, um, some rec one recommendation uh, for me is if you want this to be smaller, so you want the dots to be bigger in like all of these bitmap settings uh, from the fusion editor and pattern editor, uh, I would just lower the output here. So if I uh, divide this by uh, two, which leaves with 36 pixels per inch, you'll see that, it's, that the document will just be a little bit smaller and you'll uh, your effect will be a little bit better like visible in terms of how many pixels are being used. So let's just try this with like a really low output, maybe like six. Yeah, as you can see, it's just some pixels here. This could be cool for some projects. I'm not really sure if you really want to convert something into a lo-fi uh, image. Um, yeah, we're gonna just stick with it 72 for now. All right, so the last one that we didn't uh, haven't tested yet is the custom pattern. And basically you can select the pattern that's like filled in for your, uh, from yourself. Um, if you define a pattern already, like these are some default ones from Photoshop. So let's just pick this one. And it just implements that pattern into your uh, image. So like, for example, here I have, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's like a, a steel uh, pattern like on the floor. And it's, I think it's seamless. So let's just try this. Yeah, and as you can see, the steel floor pattern is implementing into your uh, image. So this can be really cool as well, but I would recommend doing this on text or something that's like with a transparent background, because as you can see, the shotgun isn't really well preserved yet. Um, so yeah. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna go and play around with this and uh, show you the end result of the artwork. All right, so I did around, play around with some of the uh, effects here. And as you might have noticed from the uh, quick little time lapse, um, when you convert it to in, into a bitmap, um, you can't really like play around with the layers anymore in Photoshop. And that's because it's a bitmap image. Um, so what I just recommend is copying what you have and put it into a new document with the same size and you can just play around with it there. And there's something that I uh, forgot to show you guys. Uh, so let's go back a little bit. Um, so if we uh, go back into this and we create another bitmap effect, uh, under the options of halftone screen, you can actually uh, play around with uh, different shapes that will make the halftone screen. Um, so if we up this to, I think 12 or something, you might be able to see it better. Um, yeah, basically these decide on what your shape will look like. So, um, the default is actually round. That's what most people use, as you can see here. But if we pick another one, yeah, you can actually see, for example, here we use lines instead of like, uh, uh, ellipses or circles. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to play around with these yourself and see which uh, method you like best and uh, yeah, dabble around with it. And uh, now I'm just gonna continue on my artwork here, uh, see what we can do with it. All right, so uh, this is what I uh, kind of came up with. So as you might have been seeing in the uh, time lapse, uh, I what I used uh, what I used was I duplicated the old like uh, non bitmap edited version and I duplicated it into here uh, so I could get rid of the uh, black background on the bitmap images. So 
if you look at this, uh, I basically dragged in this uh, to get rid of all the black colors here, uh, which left, uh, leaves me with just a white uh, bitmap image. Basically, if I would drag this over another color, uh, you could only see the white one, uh, uh, parts and it's a little bit hard to read. So I duplicated the original text in here. Uh, I just gave it a color overlay that's black. So the background would be black and I gave it a stroke to outline it a little bit better. Um, just to give you an idea on how to play around with the colors of a bitmap uh, image. Some other things you could be doing are adding a gradient map to it so you can convert the white and the black to another color. But yeah, for this video, I chose to like kind of uh, stuck with uh, the bitmap effects a little bit so I could show you guys uh, what, what they're capable of, I guess. All right, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions uh, regarding uh, bitmap effects, please leave them down in the comments or you can join us on Discord. Uh, I want to take this time in this video uh, to thank my patrons because of my patrons, I'm able to create more content for you guys. And that means more tutorials, more social media content, more videos. Um, so yeah, basically uh, supporting me and really helps me out. So thank you so much. Uh, so if you don't know, um, if you become a Patreon, you'll get access to all of my project files for my tutorials, uh, a 15% discount in a Dreadlabs web store and a Discord role as a Dreadlabs insider. Uh, so yeah, thanks again to all my patrons. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.